If you are watching this video, then you are probably the proud owner of an Alfa Romeo with the mighty Busso V6 engine. So congratulations! But now you have to change the oil. Regularly. So this video is going to answer the five specific questions that you probably have right now, which are which cars have this engine, what oil you are going to need, how much oil you are going to need, how often you should change it, and finally, what is the step-by-step -step procedure of changing the oil of a Busso engine. Let's go! I guess you know the history of the engine, about Mr. Giuseppe Busso, the glorious sound, the development and so on. And if not, and if you want to see a video about it, leave me a comment down below. But what is important right now is that this video concentrates on the 24-valve version of the engine, which has been used in various models between 1995 and 2005. So here comes our first question, which is which cars actually have this engine? We have three options here. First comes the 2.5 liter displacement, which has been used in Alfa Romeo 156 and 166. And take a look at the chrome inland runners. They are a little bit narrower here than in the other options, and this is how you recognize the engine. They are 42 mm wide here. Then comes the 3 liter version. Version? I sound like a Russian. <coughs> then comes the 3 liter version, which has been used in 166 and also in the GTV, and it has 45 mm wide runners. And the final option, the final iteration of the engine, is the 3.2 liter, which has been used in the 147 GTA, 156 GTA, GT, GTV, and also the 166. There was also an option for a 166 GTA, but it was going to be with a V8 engine, and this another story for an, another video, so leave a comment if you want to hear it. So, you probably own one of the cars that we have just mentioned, and with this we get to the next question, which is what oil you should use. In the beginning, Alpha was recommending the use of 10W40, but in the later production years they actually changed that to 10W60. And you are probably going to ask what is the difference between the two oils. There are actually two main differences. The first one, 10W60 handles extreme heat better than 10W40, and there is a lot of heat coming from this engine, obviously, especially in the later production years when they added the additional catalytic converters to the exhaust manifolds, and it got much hotter under the bonnets of the newer cars. And the second benefit is that 10W60 is actually thicker at higher temperatures, and this helps with the oil consumption of the engine. And yes, these engines do consume oil, and this is normal, and I personally check it once every week, 9 out of 10 times it is perfect, ok, but occasionally you need to add some oil because it gets consumed, especially at higher RPMs. This is normal. I personally use the Any Racing 10W60 and what is important to remember about it is that it actually comes in two packaging options, the golden bottles and the black bottles, and they are both the same, they have the same contents, which one you're going to get depends only on your location and your dealer. So this is a very good option. There's a link in the description so you can compare prices and see how the bottles look like. And of course you need an alternative in case you can't find the any. And a very good option for this is the Moto 8100 10W60, which is an even more expensive oil than the any, which is not cheap by any means. And it gets recommended for cars like uh, Maserati, Jaguar, V12 engines of Ferrari, the old BMW M series engines and so on. So it's also a very good oil which has proven its qualities and in addition to that you're also going to need an oil filter obviously but things are pretty simple here because this is just a standard oil filter that gets fitted to many cars not only these engines so they have them in every shop they are fairly cheap just remember that uh, there are many copycats chinese uh, low quality products and so on so a good rule of thumb here is to go with the manufacturers that you actually have heard about for example ufi champion and so on so that you don't buy something that doesn't work that well and the last question is if you need to use some additives. Sometimes I buy something like the Bardao Long Life. I have left a link in the description so you can take a look at it. But it is definitely not mandatory and you don't really need it if you have a high quality oil. So just take the high quality oil, change your filter and that's it. Right after that we get to the next question which is how much oil you're going to need. And the answer is 6.1 liters, because this is how much the engine holds. And uh, this is why I usually buy 7 liters, so that I'm left with almost a full bottle for topping up. Eventually, if the price is good, I can even buy one more bottle and have it in the garage, because sometimes 0.9 liters may not be enough for topping up between changes. And Alfa Romeo actually states that the normal consumption of the engine is up to 400 grams <coughs> per 1000 kilometers, 
which is 4 liters for 10,000 kilometers, which is a lot. But here's a screenshot, if you don't believe me. Buy one more bottle, have it in the garage, and also don't forget that sometimes you can accidentally spill oil on the ground, which I can confirm happens. Yes. So, how often should you change the oil? It is obviously not the 30,000 kilometers, which is an insane interval that the new cars manufacturers recommend nowadays. And if you open your owner's manual, you're going to find a value of about 20,000 kilometers between changes. But it is important to remember that if the car is driven in harsh conditions or for extended periods of time at low speed, which means city driving, it is recommended to change the oil much more often. And this is also my recommendation if you want your engine to last as long as possible and to be in a good health, 10 to 12,000 kilometers is a good interval of changing the oil. And with this, we get to the final question, which is what is the step-by-step -step procedure of changing the oil? And I'm going to show you on my Alfa Romeo 166. Let's go! First, drive the car for a little bit and make sure that the engine oil is warm enough. Then open the hood and leave it open. Now it is time to prepare the bottles with the new oil and take a look at the magnificent engine that we have under the hood. Now you need to go under the car and eventually remove the splash guard if you have one. It is just a matter of removing a few bolts. This is the location of the oil filter. It is, as you can see, behind the engine and behind the exhaust manifold. So this is not the best location, but it is what it is. This is where the oil drain plug is located. Sometimes you might need a pipe wrench because the drain plugs tend to disintegrate and you can't undo them in any other way. Here you can see the other required tools, just basic stuff, gloves, pump for the oil and so on. This is my damaged drain plug. This is how it looks like. Next, remove the oil cap, but don't remove it fully, leave it on top of the engine so that no dust can get inside. Say hi to the assistant and if it's not going to help, get back to work. Now comes the time to drain the oil. And of course, the tricky part always is to remove the drain plug without actually spilling oil everywhere. This is how the plug looks up close. As you can see, it has a magnet in it for metal particles. You don't want to see metal particles in there. And also now would be the time to actually exchange the plug, or at least put a new seal in there. There's a link in the description, so you can check prices. I needed the car immediately, so I decided to return this one and prepare a new plug for the next oil change, which is going to be soon anyway. Tighten the plug and proceed by removing the old oil filter. Use a tool if needed. I'm usually able to undo it by hand with some effort. And any second now you're going to see why the rear engine mount gets damaged so easily. The reason is that rubber doesn't really like being soaked in oil. And this is another design flaw which sadly we can't undo. This is the oil filter housing, make sure it is clean. Now grab the new filter and apply a thin layer of oil to the seal. Install the new filter and flex these muscles. Here you can see the new filter, it is already installed. Now grab the first bottle of oil, open it and pour it into the engine. Here I would recommend to use a funnel, but as you can see, it is achievable to get the job done even without it and even when it is windy outside. After pouring 6.1 liters into the engine, check the oil level and don't worry if it's a little bit over the maximum level mark. Because you need to keep in mind that when you start the engine, the new filter is also going to fill up with oil. Start the engine and check for weird noises. Stop it and check the oil drain plug and the oil fil filter for leaks. Wait for about 5 minutes after running the engine and check the oil level again. There is about 1 liter of difference between the minimum and maximum marks, so you can get a pretty good idea of how much oil you need to add. Now return the engine splash guard, if you have one. I would usually change the engine air filter and cabin air filter with the oil. And here is a photo of a one year old cabin air filter next to a brand new one. Changing it is super easy and only takes a screwdriver and a couple of minutes. Remove the old filter and oil and also your tools from the ground. And get back to enjoying your engine. Well, that's basically it. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions that have been left unanswered, leave a comment down below, I'm going to answer or create a new video, we'll see. And with this, press the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.